Well, I feel like the last two sermons have been just tens. I know it didn't sound like it's going, this guy's not even humble. I know. <laughs> I'm just testifying of the word. And there's a progression. God's been doing some, it's getting better and better. So it's, think about a really good word is the next, we always have the next Sunday. It's like, oh man, how do you, how do you top that? So hopefully we can. Hallelujah. God can. Hallelujah. You know, and a word in season is not always the one that makes you feel real warm and fuzzy. You ever notice the one that really helps you the most is not the one you amen the most? The one you amen the most is the one you're already doing. Oh, yeah, I believe in that. Amen. Amen. Prosperity. Preach it, brother. God wants me rich. And the next week's on obedience, and you're going, I think Brother Mike missed God. I think he got too busy this week. Didn't really seek the Lord. Kevin was sharing a few weeks ago and was sharing about uh, uh, opinions. Uh, it was really quiet in the house. After church, he goes, Dad, was there anything on it? I said, man, you knocked it out of the park, dude. It was great. He goes, well, the people just didn't respond. I said, that's because they were convicted. <laughs> Nobody wanted to amen because they felt like, oh, yeah, like you could amen that. <laughs> We were all convicted. It was great. All right. So um, so that's good. Uh, Daniel, Denzel, Denzel Washington this week um, made a statement about social media, and he said that uh, most people are addicted. He said, if you don't think you are, don't do it for a week. And watch how many people... And he got a hold of me. I don't need that. I, I'm free. Whom the sun sets free is free. Day one. <sighs> nah, don't fast it for a week. By day two. See, it's one thing to have a handful of friends. It's another thing to have a million friends. That's not realistic, people. Amen? Every so often I look on YouTube to see how many people like my sermons. I'm not that popular. That's okay. Yesterday I saw, I got a, a link to, they had some kind of special awards for the top 100 pastor or preachers in America. I went through the whole list. I wasn't on it. I checked it twice. There were some people on there, I thought, what? And, uh, but I was telling somebody yesterday, I'm not trying to be known by America. I want to be known by Jesus. I don't want to be known by Lucifer. Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? And uh, I'm happy to report there are wanted posters of me in hell. <laughs> Satan don't like me because I send a lot of, we, we send a lot of people packing as far as not people but demonic spirits that hold people captive. We get, we get that out of people and he don't like that. People that come in here with demonic spirits, don't leave with them. Hallelujah. That's awesome. So uh might not be the top 100 preachers in America, but I'm known by Jesus, and I'm known by Lucifer. Hello. Well, the first one counts. Now, you want to be known by that second one, too. Amen. When you walk in a room, and he and he should be leaving, not not like, hey, high five, Mike. We're, we're going to be working together today. Now, hallelujah. Huh? Woo, come on, Carla. We taking Carla out to lunch today. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's get in the Word. Praise God. I've been talking to you on a series about authority, what to do with it, how to handle it. Uh, we talked a few weeks ago about there's two things you do with, with authority. You can substitute it for your own, or you can represent God's authority. Amen? Or the authorities in your life. I mean, in the military, they want you to represent the, your commanding officer or the person that's over you. And when you're told to do something, they want you to do it the way they said do it. There was a true story. There was a guy doing construction, 
they were building these trusses for a church. And the guy that was the master carpenter said, laid out a pattern, built the, the original truss, and said, now, nah, every time you build one, I want you to take the wood, I want you to set it back on top of this one, measure it off, and they cut it, nail it, and set it over there, and they take another one. And the guy he says, it's going to take you a while. He said, okay, I got this. And he comes back toward the end of the day, and he looks over there, and there's a whole bunch of trusses. He's like, whew, you've been tearing it up. He said, yeah, you know, that thing, I found an easier way. He said, you know, when you make this truss, if it's just like the one I made, why take it down and go get another? That's, a, that's an extra steps involved. I just started using the one that I just made as my pattern. And uh, it just saved me time, and I didn't get so tired. Those, these trusses are heavy. He goes, yeah. He said, you didn't do that, did you? Oh, yeah. I, got, I was getting way, way more done than what, what you showed me. He said, well, those things aren't going to be the same. He said, every one of those are a pencil mark longer than the other one. And he said, when we put that roof up there, he said, it's not going to be, it's not, it's not going to be right but toward the end. We can't even use those. So you just wasted all that wood. See, representation matters. I want to tell you something about spirituals. So we're always trying to be spiritual, but you know, if we're not, if we don't do naturals well, we won't do spirituals well. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a minute. I believe my spiritual life is different than my natural life. Really? The Bible says naturals before spirituals. If you, don't, if you don't have victory over a sink full of dishes, ladies, you're not going to have victory over casting out demons out of people. Yes. It's quiet, Kev. <laughs> They're learning. <laughs> you know, the Bible talks in the book of, um, in the book of Ezekiel. It says, show, God's telling Ezekiel, it says, show, the, show the Israel the pattern, the house. And he says, the house, the house, the house. There's, I mean, this is the house we, that God dwells in. This house right here. Then there's, I have Mike's house. This is the house that Jack built. This house that Mike built. Then I have my domestic house, which is my wife and my children, my grandchildren. And see, if I can rule that house well, then God will let me rule his house. I mean, you know God's real protective of his kids. Aren't you glad he is? I mean, you ought, you ought not get abused in the house of God. Amen? So, so if I can get this house working, and then I can get my domestic house working right, then God can use me in his house. People go, yeah, but I think he could skip a few of those steps. I think he could go right to moving and grooving in the things of God. I mean, I have a Dake's Annotated Reference Bible, Brother Mike. I have a complete word study Bible. I can tell you every Greek and Hebrew word. I have a Strong's on my phone. I got weaponry. I'm loaded. We don't. See, it's representation. We're representing. There's another way of saying that, representing. How many of we need to represent Jesus to the world? How many of there's some weird Jesuses out there? Not everything that calls itself Jesus is Jesus. Not everything that calls itself Christian is Christ-like. Why is it this, this today, Sunday, there are men yelling and screaming at the house of God's people, and others are just, you know, hey, can't we all get along? Can't we all just talk? Why is there so many different kinds of Jesus, you know, people preaching the same Jesus? And we're all using the same Bible. How do we come up with so many? There's some that, that are preaching the letter of the law, which killeth. And then there's some that's preaching sloppy agape, greasy grace, Hyper grace. Well, hey, whatever you do, it's all your sins, past, present, future, all covered. Don't matter. Uh, that's not true. See, I have to represent, represent Jesus from the pulpit. And I, this FYI, he does have a sense of humor. Some of the people, go, I've never laughed so. I've seen people look convicted for laughing in the house of God. They're like, <laughs> sorry, Father, Father. It's like, hey, it's okay. Where, what would be the happiest place to be? In the presence of God. 
When you get to heaven, some of you are going to freak because you're going to be, as you get closer to the throne room, you're going to hear this thunderous roar of joy and laughter. And you're going, whoa, what's, what's going on in there? God's in that place. Where is the greatest joy in the universe? In the presence of God. People go, no, like people walk in there going, oh, God, don't strike me. I know I'm not worthy. I'm just a, saved a worm as I. Oh, God. That's not what he wants. We're sons and daughters. Hallelujah. All right, this is just a little preload. Let's get ready. Hallelujah. All right, first, we'll talk to you this morning about rep representation. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind or attitude be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. How I many are we supposed to be like Jesus? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it to be robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon the form of a, of a bondservant, and becoming... In the, uh, and coming in the likeness of men. Being found, King, Sha King James says, being found fashioned as a man. Here, the King, New King James says, being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Who humbled him? He did. It's our job to humble ourselves. It's God's job to exalt us. If we do God's job and try to exalt us, then he will do our job and humble us. We don't want to... Get humbled by God. Amen? But Jesus humbled himself um, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, because of this, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Do you know every time you say Jesus is Lord, it brings God glory? You ought to say it throughout the week. I do. Jesus is Lord. It brings God, you, know, just, you don't have to wait till you see him to say that. You can get in practice now. Just, you know when you say Jesus is Lord, you can say, honk, Jesus loves you. You, know, you can have kind of all these stickers on your car, but when you say Jesus is Lord, you've challenged every authority on the planet. You're saying Jesus is Lord. Can't we all get along? Can't we just coexist? We can, in, only in Christ. But you can't just hold hands with everybody. Jesus is Lord. I cast demons out of two guys yesterday. You know what? I didn't use the name of Buddha once. You know why? Wouldn't work. I didn't use my name. They don't come out in my name. I thought you have authority. I represent authority. I have the authority to use his name. I've been given that right through righteousness. Amen? Being born again, we get the right to use his name. They came out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, must keep reading. Um, to the glory of, of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much the more in my absence. How does that apply? I mean, you know, when I go out of town to do something, whatever, some people think, ah, it's a good Sunday to stay home. I got some yard work and stuff. That's what he's saying right here. Don't just be, don't just be here when I'm here. Well, in my absence, much the more. Amen? Then it goes and says this. Listen to this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and do his good pleasure. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now let's, let's clarify what this means. Um, this is the salvation of your soul, not your spirit. We are spirit, soul, and body. When you got saved and you asked Jesus to come in your heart, your spirit got instantly saved. Did it? Yeah. Did you work for it? Well, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are you, saved, have you, you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself, it's a gift of God. You know, God gave you the faith to get saved. How many of you ever went, to, when you got, some of y'all got saved in church. How many of y'all know the, 
Carla, the Sunday you came to church with your family on Easter Sunday, because that's what you do on Easter Sunday. It's a, it's a famous Sunday to go to church on Easter Sunday. Or the other highlight is, what? Christmas Sunday. So she's there with her family up on the, on the balcony, all looking so marvelous. Did, did Carla get up that morning going, kids, get up, we're going to church, going to get saved today. Come on, come on. No, wear, don't wear that. You don't want to get saved in that. She got up, went to church. She sat in there and heard a message. The Holy Spirit convicted her and gave her the faith to believe. So that's what it says. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It's a gift from God. I wish I had the faith. He gave you the faith to get saved. You know, the Bible says God has given to every man the measure of faith. It says the, not a. See, if it said a measure of faith, we could say, well, Andy Brown got 16 pounds worth of faith. Linda Jones got 32 ounces. What? That's a measure. But in say a, it says, Kevin, it says the measure of faith. You know, we all got the same amount of faith to get saved. You know, when you were born, you got two muscles up here in your arm called biceps. No baby comes out all muscular. You see, guys are all muscular. You go, gosh, you're lucky. Well, there's no luck involved in that, man. That's work. It's not like the baby came out. What's wrong with this freaky kid? He's all cut and muscular. He stands up. Oh, cut the cord. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The doctor, the doctor slaps and the baby. Pow! <laughs> you want a piece of me? That's a freak of nature. We don't come out that. But he has two muscles, two, bi, two, two biceps. If he works those, they will get bigger. Hallelujah. There's a six-pack under here. As soon as I get this keg out of the way, I'll show them to you someday. Hallelujah. There it's there. We act like some people got extra muscles or, wow, you got so many, you're so ripped. You're so lucky. Luck has nothing to do it. In all labor, there is profit. It's work. Um, so he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Here it says you're saved by grace. There's an, and it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you can't boast about it. So the salvation of your spirit was a gift from God. You didn't work for it. You didn't impress God with, you know, anything. You just said, I'm sorry, I'm a sinner. Jesus, please forgive me. And he says, no problem. Poof. And you were, and you were saved. But here it's saying, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There is a salvation of the soul. Well, you know, soul and spirit, that's the same thing, Brother Mike. No, 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 pray tell. Because all our lives we've been told, you give an altar call and somebody raises their hand, oh, then after the altar call, four people, four souls were saved today. I beg to differ. Four people got born again. Four people got saved. Their spirit got saved. Not their soul. Wish it, wish it was that easy to get your soul saved. There's some work involved to get that soul saved. You know everybody's soul's different? Some people's souls are, are more broke than others. Some of y'all grew up in homes where you had a lot of bad deposits. That makes your soul more difficult. Some of y'all grew up being criticized for having even an opinion or a thought about something. You were criticized, put down. That's why it's so hard for you to believe good things about yourself. Others, you're so, you had too much freedom. You ruled your life at a young age. You've been the boss, the captain of your destiny. Let me tell you something. You know what you need? If you're going to get your soul saved, you need boundaries. Well, I rebuke boundaries. I don't like boundaries. I haven't had boundaries in my life since I was 10. How's that working for you? My life's really messed up. It's because you never had boundaries. I mean, oh, we need boundaries. See, it's not only do you have to get your soul saved, you've got to find out what kind of soul you got so you know how to work with it. If you were a spoiled child and it was always yes, and you always got what you want, how many know if you're going to get your soul dealt with, you're going to have to hear the word no. I'm going to tell you how you can tell you have a spoiled soul. Somebody tell you no, and watch how you respond. What? Do you know who you're talking to? 
My daddy always gave it to me. See, whatever I wanted, my daddy gave me. But see, that, he didn't represent his heavenly father very good, did he? Because your heavenly father doesn't always give you what you want. How I many of some of the first people you started dating and knew that was the one? Aren't, didn't you later praise God? Thank you, Jesus. You didn't give me what I wanted. Amen? Some of us got what we, what we picked. Didn't work out so good, did it? You know, the Bible says God will, what God has joined together, let no man separate. God don't, just because just people get married don't always mean God's joining them together. You know, if you're unequally yoked, how many know God's not real happy about that? Well, they made it legal, so we all have to just go with it. And we wonder why these people always struggle in their lives. If you don't get equally yoked, you will have a hard time with that relationship. It's quiet, Kev. <laughs> all right. Now here's a, I'm going to tell you something about representation. I have to represent the Word of God to you. I can't, if I water it down, I'm not representing Jesus. You ever been to a church where the pastor's getting really close to speak, saying that, oh, here it comes. He's about to let loose. Come on, bring it. You know, in the book of Acts, we find where the disciples were in the upper room, praise God. He's going to talk about the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we know that was, and they, were, and they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, so the, and all the Spirit-filled people went, yeah, bring it. And then, he's de then, he, then he does something that his denomination tells him to do, not what the Word of God says. And we know that was for evangelism back in those days because we hear that these people were speaking in their own languages. We don't find Peter ever going out after that when he was to, to the Greeks or anybody else. Well, come on, John, let's go down and speak in tongues to the Greeks. I knew a guy that, that used to, Used to go to Mexico and said he would just, he never learned the language, he would just pray in tongues. So you go, that's weird. Yeah, it's exactly what it was. It was weird. Did people understand him? Not many. Why, well, if you're going to, if you're, if you're called to reach people in Mexico, learn the language. See, there's, that's misrepresenting. That's goofy. There's some goofy folks out there. I try not to run with them. When I run into them in town, I try to get away as fast as possible because I'm afraid somebody's going to see me talking to them. Hey, how's it going? See you, brother. I saw Pastor Mike with Brother Weirdo. <laughs> I don't want to be seen with Brother Weirdo. Some of you going, gosh, are you really serious? Not extreme, but why is it some of the weirdest people are the boldest? When I, you know what kept me from coming to Jesus was the weirdos in school that came up wearing double... Whenever all the other kids were wearing blue jeans, these guys were wearing double knit. You know what, you know what double knit pants are? It's like wearing sponges. I'd, I'd be afraid to get near a water, a, a little puddle. <laughs> oh, great, that's going to leave a mark. And they'd have these weird little jumpsuits and walk around, and they walked weird. They didn't walk like normal people. And they carried their Bibles out front so everybody knew they were Christians and had the biggest cross they could find. Do you know the four spiritual laws? Humor me. You're a sinner and you're going to hell. <laughs> More good news. Keep it coming. But you, you know, they, they do this weird, pro, this robotic stuff. And I, I always just think, if I become a Christian, I've got to be like that. I mean, nothing in me wants to be like that. See, they're not representing Jesus. You ever met these women, got the hair all piled up, got about 16 pounds of, of bobby pins in their hair? And if you're going to be holy, you've got to look like this. So I'm going to tell you, there's so, much, there's so much weird stuff in the church that needs to get, we need to get over it. They're looking at women with short hair going, cutting your glory, cutting your glory. Looking at guys with long hair going, it's your shame, it's your shame. I mean, if you're going to glory, glory in the Lord. Donna, your glory is not your hair, it's Jesus. Amen? The Bible says, let him that glory. Brenda, your, your glory is not your hair, it's, it's Jesus. Although I like your hair. You know, if she was really Pentecostal, Brother Mike, she would grow it. I used to have long hair. For nine years, I was a long hair preacher in the South. I mean, that's not the place you want to be a long hair preaching the gospel in the 70s. I'm telling you, you got some weird looks. And I always had people go, Brother Mike, 
I got a scripture, and I know that when they come up, they're going to minister to me. And I, know, I saw it coming. Can I share something with you? Here it comes, condemnation. Uh, in Corinthians here it says, and I, I knew this by heart because I've been encouraged so many times in this scripture. You know, it says right here in the Bible, a man's long hair is his shame. I just thought I'd share that with you. Thanks. And I, would, you know, I had to read a little for, you know, I said, but you know, if you keep on reading, Paul says the church has no such custom, nor do I. It says if a brother seems to be contentious, he don't want to cut his hair, don't worry about it. See, we're trying to get everybody to conform and look like us, sound like us, go to our denomination, read our, what kind of Bible you got? New King James. New, New, New King James. Hmm, sorry. NIV, oh my gosh. Message Bible? You're not even saved. <laughs> Living Bible? Pfft. Milk. <laughs> I mean, that's really what we, we're judging everybody by their Bible, walking in going, mm, maybe. No, pff, not even. <laughs> Jesus said, don't look on the outward, the outward appearance of a man. You'll, you'll miss it every time. And it's not how much you read the Bible, it's how much you do it. All right. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. The more you get the word of God in you, and it changes your way of thinking, so you start thinking and acting like God, that saves your soul. The Bible talks about renewing your mind. Okay? We want to get... All right. So one takes work, and one's instantaneous. Hallelujah. And there's a sign out front, that little B brown one. I don't think people read it, but... I don't want to do bright orange because that's just tacky. <laughs> so I believe God will cause people to see that. Amen. Verse Thessalonians 5.23, it says, The God of peace himself sanctify you completely, holy, and make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. I mean, oh, God wants your spirit, soul, and body blameless when he comes back it says whole w-h-o-l-e not holy whole he wants you complete he wants you whole um how many want your emotions to be your friend not your enemy yeah all right why is it that the majority of the church is work is is working on the uh, the body and the and the spirit when we really don't have much to do with that how many of jesus saved you made your spirit get born again it was a, wor a work of a sovereign work of grace i don't know the redemption of your body is futuristic it, we'll get new bodies when he comes so those two are really out of our hands are all the only one you can really work on is the, is the your soul dealing with it and that's the one that most people don't do anything with i don't know if y'all noticed that but well you make up for it brother mike because that's all you talk about Authority is not about equality, it's about order. See, we have trouble submitting to authority and representing authority because we're trying to equalize everything. You know, in the military, it's not about how many of them everybody's equal. The guy, you don't salute everybody. A bunch of privates hanging out, they don't salute each other, they're all privates. A general will come by or uh, some, an officer, they salute the rank. You go to a hospital, there's doctors walking around. How many know they, they kind of outrank nurses? No offense. <laughs> Sherry's going, yeah, but we do all the work. <laughs> and I know you do. But see, I, how many know there's a chain of command in the hospital? How many know there's a chain of command at uh, anywhere you work? Well, yeah, but, you know, talk spirituals. Get out of that natural stuff. That's the, we're here to be learn about spirituals. That's what we're here to talk about. In Hebrews chapter 5, see, Jesus, according to the first scripture we read in Philippians, he, was, he didn't count it like he was ripping God off to be equal with God. I know Jesus and God are, are God, part of the Godhead. I mean, the Holy Spirit chiming in there, all three of them make up the Godhead. But all three of them have purpose 
Jesus humbled himself and became the Son of God. He refers to his Father. The Holy Spirit comes along, and he refers to Jesus. And neither, none of them walk around going, wish I could be the Father. No kidding. The Holy Spirit and Jesus don't get together and talk about God. Hello? I wish, I wish, I wish we were the Father. We'd be the boss. They're all the boss. So we got to get this mindset of, of nobody bosses me around. Well, you're going to live a pretty reckless life. We need authority in our life. We need covering. We don't need Rambos, one-man guy out there taking on all, you know, everybody. We need people all around us watching. You know, I, I got people watching my backside. I got, I'm watching other people's backside. If you see your brother overtaken in a fault, you that are spiritual, go and restore not destroy. It says restore. We're all working together, helping each other make this race. In Hebrews chapter, uh, authority is not about equality. It's about order. Hallelujah. Um, in Hebrews chapter 5, let's turn there. I know you're already there behind me. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. It says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, God, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Verse 7, what's that talking about? Gethsemane. I mean, Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was praying to God who was able to save him from death. And he was crying. How many of you sweat blood? He was crying so hard and seeking the Lord. And how many know in Jesus' prayer in the garden, he said, Lord, if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. But if it can't, except I drink it, your will be done. We find Jesus worn with his soul. And he's praying. Let's keep reading. Verse 8. Though he, were, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Being a Christian, there's some suffering involved, folks. Blessings, blessings, just bless, 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 blessings. Nobody ever says, suffering, <laughs> suffering. Be about your father's business. Endure suffering as a hard soldier of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Watch, watch the shrapnel. There's suffering. He learned obedience. It means he had to make himself do something for something to happen. I mean, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was working hard to get his soul to change its mind. Had Jesus not got victory of his soul in the Garden, he wouldn't have made it to the cross. So we all go, yeah, thank God for Calvary. Yes, amen. Jesus died physically in, on, on the cross. Jesus died physically on the cross, but he, he first died to his own will in the Garden. That's so important. If you don't get your will dealt with, you'll never be able to submit to God's will if you can't get your will to cooperate with God's will. Well, I figure if God wants me to do it, he'll rain pixie dust on me and I'll just get all these Holy Ghost goosebumps that make me feel all... In my, my emotions will get all charged up with happy thoughts and I'll go out and be about my father's business. And I don't know what, what version of the Bible you're reading. That don't work. Jesus was in the garden... And he's praying, and he's breaking blood vessels and sweating blood. This wasn't some little, that picture you see him in the, with, near, near a rock praying and light shining down on him, and his robe is perfect, and his hair is perfect. That's not Gethsemane. He's sweating. He's, his hair is wet. He's going looking at his disciples. Come on, guys. Stay, I need you. Stay awake. He died, he died physically on the cross, but he first died to his own will in the garden. He's trying to represent the will of his father. I'm going to tell you something. As, as a son and daughter of God, there's times in your Christian walk, you're going to find things that are contrary to what you want to do. As parents, do you know, as a mom and dad, sacrifice is, you better embrace it, otherwise your kids are going to suffer. 
I had a lady in our church decades ago, so don't try to figure out who it is. She, um, she called some, a lady in the church for some food. She said, this, this elderly lady that used to have a food pantry in her house and would store food, she said, you know, we really need some food. Can you help us out? Oh, yeah. So she went and got food, several bags of food, took them over there, took them to this lady's house. Oh, looking good. Let's, the jacket. <laughs> went over there and uh, starts unloading the food. She pulls out the cereal. It was... I think cornflakes, and she goes, oh, my kids don't like cornflakes. You got anything pre-sweetened? <laughs> you got to know this lady that this lady's trying to bless her, and they're, and they're not thankful for what they're getting. She bought a, got some oatmeal out and some other things. <laughs> but they don't like oatmeal. How many of she's not really hungry? And she's, you know, at one point, this lady, bless her heart, she was like 70-something years old, she said, well, you know, call me when you're hungry. <laughs> you go, well, that was her soul. No, I want to tell you something. Sometimes that's your spirit. Sometimes your spirit, the Bible says be angry but sin not. Sometimes you need to let people know, you know, I came over here, brought you some food because this is what I have. And if you're not thankful, then I, I can take it home. I can give it to somebody who wants it. No, 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 okay, okay. We, and she said, okay, we'll take it. And then she left. Two hours later, she was at Albertson's parking lot, and she watched this lady come out of one of those places that does your nails. And she saw her come out of there, and she goes, what are you doing in there? Oh, I was getting my nails done. She said, I thought you didn't have any money for groceries. Well, I didn't have any for grocery money, but this is my nail money. Now, some of you are going, those poor kids. I heard that. Yes, those poor kids, because you're dealing with a, with, a, with a child that has not grown up. Oh, well, she's the mother. She's the grown-up. How many of y'all get convicted sometimes saying the word grown-up when you're talking to certain people? I know I have to call you a grown-up, but everything in me says I can't. You know, the Bible talks about when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, what, how do you know you become a man? You put away childish things. If you're a parent, you better embrace selflessness amen it can't be about you it can't be about your toys it can't be about what you want you got responsibilities do you see why i started off saying it's got to be about us growing up and how we deal with our families because if we don't deal with our families right we will not deal with god's people right and god does not want people messing with his kids amen don't so when I'm trying to raise money for a Bentley, leave. <laughs> you should leave the church. Amen? That, when I, I, get, I get just appalled by some of the goofiness in the church. You know, I need a new Learjet, body of Christ, come on. And people act like that. Well, he's an ambassador for the kingdom. We're all ambassadors for the kingdom. Some of these people better enjoy their, their little trip down here because when they get to heaven, they're going to be surprised that they don't have as much laid up as they thought. Where's, all my, where's, where's my mansion? Uh, on earth? <laughs> Where you left it? I wanted to build you one, but you were bent on building your own down there. So I said, all right. But Father and I said, let them go for it. We told them to build up here, but they chose to build down there. Where's my crown? You wore it down there, son. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's getting quiet, Kev. <laughs> All right. That's Roman numeral one. Oh, thank God. Let's move on. Maybe in Roman numeral two will be nicer. True representation requires a heart of referral. If you're going to represent Jesus to the world, you're going to have to get your phone line working. You know, I love cell phones and so. Because sometimes they just drop calls. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> you ever been talking to somebody and you're wishing it would drop? Yeah. You know, I found a way to make it drop. <laughs> 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 they don't know that you hung up on them. Right. If they call back and go, hey, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of you are going, does he do that to me? Right. No. Sometimes it just drops, people. Hello. But you know what I'm talking about? You ever been talking to somebody and you're it's like, please make it stop. And you're trying to be a good Christian and listen and be sensitive and stuff. But they're just going on and on about nothing. 
or they're whining. Now, if you go to God and you bow and you fold your hands and you take, and you take that same profile with God and you whine, he won't pick up the phone. Oh, he does. He listens to me when I whine. Really? Show me that in the Word. You enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. If you're complaining and whining, why do you think God's going to... I don't like listening to it. Do you think your Heavenly Father does? Well, that's how... He has an understanding of... He knows... That's how we are. I'm so glad he wrote down how, how to approach him, how to talk to him. Because if he hadn't, we'd be a mess, wouldn't we? And I know God answers my prayers because... I cry more than most. Tears don't mean anything with God. The Bible says we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our... Infer- he feels what you're going through, people. And I'm not saying tears don't mean something. They do. But he's more moved by faith than he is... See, tears are your emotions. That's coming from your soul. How many of God wants us to talk to him in spirit? Our spirit. Our spirit. We got born again so we could have fellowship with him. Why do we keep trying to fellowship him in the natural, in a realm that we're not even good at? It doesn't even represent us well. I mean, there's some days you're feeling pleasant. You have the joy of the Lord. You're in a good mood. Say the word mood. Everything's going your way. And you're one phone call away from, from everything. To just You know, you're sitting at the light, minding your own business. And some little kid on the sorry, and they got on their phone. It's like okay, now let's see, now let's see, <laughs> let's see what happens to that mood. You get out and you look at your car. Oh my gosh, you got insurance? No, sorry. <laughs> and this <is> special. <laughs> Hello. Then about two days later, you're going ah, what's going on with my neck? It happens. This is called life. Are we still, you know, got the joy of the Lord? People are calling, how's it going? Shut up. <laughs> I heard you was in a fender bender. Yeah, let me tell you about that. This is a stupid kid. I was <laughs> what happened to that? Hallelujah. Glory cloud all around me. Hallelujah. So this is where we live, people. You're going to have fender benders. People... Things are going to happen. It's how fast you can recover. And when it does happen, do you represent yourself or do you represent Jesus? I think we need to get a big box of those WWJD and pass them back out because I think that little trend came and went and we still didn't. What would Jesus do? I think we still need to wear that because I think we're forgetting. You remember those, WWJD. If you have to look at it, look at it, look at it. Whatever makes you respond properly, let's do it. Amen? Wear a cross, whatever you got to do. I don't know, tattoo. Pay attention, says Jesus. You know, <laughs> or, um, talking about represent, true representation requires a heart of referral. We need to say, okay, Father, well, how do I handle this? If somebody ever comes to you and says, you need to sit down, and they got that weird look on your face like, you need to tell your soul at that moment. Or when people say, don't be mad. If your wife comes up to you with the checkbook and says, honey, don't be upset. <laughs> Men, you need to just tell your soul at that point, okay, whatever, what's coming out of her mouth in the next few minutes, don't freak out. She's even given you warning. But I thought I, I, I carried a zero the other day that wasn't a zero. It, we're overdrawn. I have like six things bouncing. Each one of those is 30-something dollars, and it's, it's bad. Now, you can either get mad, yell, scream, all this. The, 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 the wrath of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. See, we're talking about authority. We want to be pillars in the church. We want to be elders. We want to be mighty men of God. We want to be known in the city. Not just elders in the house. I'm an elder in the city of Ramona. I'm a gatekeeper for the whole valley. Glory to God. Demons don't come in this town. We keep it covered. That'd be awesome. But if we if we freak out over the checkbook and we yell and scream and our kids are running down the street, ah, Daddy's going crazy. 
then the okay. Jesus said in John five thirty says, "I can of my own self do nothing." What? This is the Son of God talking. He says, "Of of my own self I can do nothing." Well, you're Jesus. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of, of my Father who sent me. You remember when they caught Jesus, they busted him, they were trying to. They came up and said, hey, Jesus. They dragged this woman out of this house, caught in the very act of adultery. That means she's with somebody. The law says you bring them both. They forgot that part. They just dragged her out there. I don't know if she had clothes on or not, or just wrapped up in a sheet. They threw her at Jesus' feet and said, this woman was caught in the very act. The law says stone her. What do you say? Now, I'll tell you, that was a toughie. Because that's what the law said. Jesus said, I, I came to fulfill the law. Amen? So he, he just kind of kneels down and starts doodling. And I hear, that's what I believe he was saying. It's a good one, God. If I say, forgive her, then I'm going against the law. If I say stoner, then I'm going against everything I've been telling everybody about forgiveness. I don't see how I can win this one. Now, he says he didn't do anything except what his father told him. How many of y'all remember Jesus left deity in heaven when he came down here and became a man? He's a man talking to God about a situation that's really tough. So he starts scribbling in the dirt, going, okay, what's he doing? Buying time. He's waiting to hear from God. And God has a heart of referral. God said to him, here's one, tell him this. Anybody that has no sin, they can throw the first stone. I can see Jesus just kind of going, oh, that's classic. Oh, that, oh that's a keeper. Oh, boy, howdy. <laughs> then he gets up, he's all smiles. I got it. <laughs> Any of you guys that have no sin, throw the first stone. And they're all like, holding these rocks in their hand. Oh, man. If I throw this stone, I'll be stoned for lying because everybody, everybody knows me. <laughs> so they just start dropping their rocks, start walking off. And the Bible says they did from the oldest to the youngest. You know why representation is so important? Because young people are watching you. Your children are watching you. How you handle life, they're watching it. We're supposed to know better. Amen? So then the, all the zealous little young teenagers are going, you said it was a sure deal. We were going to get to kill them. Isn't that sad that there's, see, religious people want to kill. They want to hurt. They want to embarrass. They want to make people feel unworthy. Because if we can disqualify them, that puts us closer to the front. Now, yeah, wh wh what does that sound like? Sounds like the world to me. Climbing that corporate ladder, stepping on whoever you've got to step on to get to the top, because if you get to the top, you win. That is not a kingdom mentality. In fact, the kingdom mentality is the opposite. The kingdom mentality says, no, you go ahead. I'm going to prefer you. I'm gonna, you're servant of all. And Jesus looks at that guy that's preferring everybody else and says, I'm, you're great. You're a servant. You're great. Hallelujah. Another principle you've got to look at, Jesus says, uh, I don't do anything except what I hear. Well, I can't hear from God. Well, we need to get you, get you some, something going on in your ears. I mean, we, have, we should have ears to hear. That still small voice is a still small voice. If you've got so much noise in your head, we need to get you silenced. Some people can't hear from God because there's too much stuff going on. Donald, we just got to silence that. Stop the bus. Cheerleaders, get off. Let's get it quiet in here so we can hear from God. Because God's always talking to us. We just don't. He is? All the time. You mean me on Sunday morning when I'm in this position? No, he's talking to you all the time. You're just not listening. We're too busy listening to talk radio, getting mad on the way home. So we, when we get home, we yell at our kids because we're angry. Why are we angry? Because we sit and listen to all for an hour and a half of people that are stealing and doing all kind of things. Well, I like talk radio. You know, I'm going to tell you something about emotions. Emotions, I, we all like them. So, huh, people like to be scared. Uh, they wouldn't make scary movies. There's something about, oh. 
When I married Brenda, I like to scare people. I like to trick people. It's fun. I do it to Dave all the time. He'll be come, I see him coming down the hallway. I'll say, ah! Uh, uh. <laughs> He's hard on the ticker. I do, I do it because I can do it to Dave. I can't do it to Bren. I remember one time we first got married. Was, she went down the hallway, and I just got out of bed. Like, and, she, and she knew me. She said, I'm going to tell you right now, if you scare me, I will leave you. <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> she said, you know, my last marriage tormented me. That's another thing that I had to forgive her ex over. You too. Thanks for taking all the fun. But we, we, like, we like to scare people. We like to, you know, just because that, ah, that reaction, it's fine. Okay, if, if some of y'all going, please don't do this to me, I won't. Um, but we like emotions. We like we like to we watch we watch Hallmark movies and we know we're going to cry. We know you see the preview and the preview sets you up one. Oh yeah, this is a this is probably a this is a box, a box Kleenex. This is going to be you can just tell you're going to cry. Then why watch it? Because we like that. Amen. See, our emotions are our friends when they're working for us. It's when they're working against us that they're not our friends. As I hear, I say. We have to get our soul quiet so we can hear from God. Not only is God talking to us, he's showing us things. Reflection is a, key, is a key to representation. How many we need to see how it's done? How many of our parents are a reflection and they're, they're actually a representation of, our, of the Father's love and the Father's authority? That's why we should raise our children by the word of God, not by Dr. Spock. Not by timeouts, not by rewarding bad behavior at the supermarket because it makes them quiet and saves us the embarrassment. See, that's all about saving your soul, not theirs. If your kid throws a fit at the supermarket and you give him a candy bar and you reward bad behavior, shame on you because you're, re you're fortifying bad behavior. And he starts figuring out, you know, if I do something bad, I get rewarded for it. I mean, that's not going to change. Hallelujah. It's a whole other story. Reflection. It's what they see. How I many of us parents, our children should see something in us that speaks to them? How I many of you can see what pa how many y'all see what patience looks like? Does patient have a look? It absolutely has a look. You ever been around people that aren't very patient? Working on the car, throwing things, breaking things, slamming the hood. Little kid's terrified. We done yet, Daddy? <laughs> Kevin's smiling. I used to, my, an orange, I have grown, brother. My, he used to hate to work with me when I'd be fixing sprinklers because my kids would always do things and they'd break the sprinklers and, oh, I was a geyser. So I'd get them out there and I'd be working on the sprinklers. And sometimes the sprinklers weren't always our friends, my friends. And, you know, I get, you know, and when patience isn't patient, you can tell because it has a look. My dad was one of the most patient men I ever met. He could work on an appliance for hours, get knuckle busters, have his hands bleeding and all kinds of stuff. And he would just, he's like a Timex. He'd just keep on tick, taking a lick and keep on ticking. He just, man, it's amazing. I'm over there. If I, if I can't get it figured out and fixed in an hour, I'm ready to do something else. How I many of I mean, that's changed? So you're like, wow, you have grown because you're very patient now. What, you, know, you know what? You know what? What taught me patience? Trials. I raised six boys. You better learn patience, or you're going to be a mess. Amen. Brenda has great patience, except with computers. Her, her and computers. Her and the little mouse. I said, honey, I, I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think banging on the mouse is. And she talks to it. She talks, what? No, no, no. Like the computer's going, sorry, sorry. Rika. She talks to her GPS. No, idiot, I'm not going that way. Recomputing. <laughs> she talks to people going by. If you ever see Brent talking to you, she's not talking to you. <laughs> what are you thinking? It's, you know, this is, remember, this is the point I was trying to make, reflection. One time... Brenda was traveling, doing something when Megan was a little girl, and she's in the back seat in her car seat, 
and she's going down the road, and somebody pulled out, and Megan from the back seat, she's probably three years old, says, What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Don't, don't, slow down. <laughs> Brand looks in the rearview mirror. Oh, dear Lord. I have reproduced my, my, my lack of patience in my daughter. See, it'll either produce patience or lack of patience. It'll e- either produce humility or opinions. It's reproducing something all the time. Hallelujah. What's clean? Oh yeah, she oh she don't cuss. She don't cuss. I gotta give her that. She's she's she don't cuss and she always waves. All fingers present. Hallelujah. None of those none of those Christian I said last week Christian flip offs. What is it? I listened to the word this my, my sermon last I don't do it all the time, but last week I thought, Christian flip off, where'd that come from? Some people they, they Sorry, Father. <laughs> they're repenting as they're doing it. That makes it justified. Reflection is a key to representation. It's not enough just to, to sound like Jesus. Amen? we got to reflect. we got to do it the way he does it. Remember the Bible says he's the way, the truth, and life. The way, the way that you do things is just as important as what you do. In John chapter 15, chapter 5, verse 19, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. We've got to do it the way Jesus does it. If the Lord ever tells you to go get, 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 make some brownies or do something for your neighbor who's, who gives you a hard time or whatever, who brings their dog in your yard, does their business and goes back. And you've seen them through the window and you've banged on the window. You say, hey! <laughs> they just walk off. Not that this happens to anybody out here. And the Lord tells you, and you've prayed about it, Lord, my neighbor and that stupid dog. It's a huge, it's not a chihuahua. Rabbit pellets I can handle. It's a St. Bernard. <laughs> my kids are tripping in the front yard. It's terrible, God. And God says, Here's what I want you to do. All right, that's what I want to hear. Brother Mike said he would talk to us. I want you to make some brownies and take them over and bless them. I rebuke you, Satan. Get thee behind me. I'm trying to hear from God. You shut up. God, what was it? Sorry, it was interrupted by the devil. What is it? Make some brownies. Sometimes we'll be in that prayer closet until we get God to change his mind. How you know it's God? He don't change his mind. I'm the Lord God. I change not. And you go, I ain't making them brownies. The Bible says, bless those that curse you. Yeah, I know it says that, but I think that's just spirit, that's spiritualized talking. We can't pick and choose what we want to believe and not. I mean, you know, the stuff in red, you ought to just do it. If you didn't do anything else in the Bible, just, just, just did the red, you'd be a way different person. What you see Jesus do, you got to do. What would Jesus do? He'd make them brownies. He'd go out there and clean it up, not throw it in their yard. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, some of y'all go, Why do, where do you get these where do you get these analogies? They just come to me. None of this is written down. I just expect the Lord to fill my mouth. Well, they're just they're just bizarre. Because that's that doesn't really happen. Yeah, it does. It does happen. Some of y'all get plants and really pretty flowers and stuff, and then some kids come by picking them for his girlfriend. You go, hey, those are mine. Sorry. <laughs> As they continue to pull them off. It happens. I've been the guy picking them. <laughs> Bless you. Blessings. <laughs> yeah, it's signed yard of the month. Probably not going to get it next month. Hallelujah. All right. We got to hear from God like Jesus did, and do whatever he tells us. we got to watch how Jesus does things. And this has to do with authority. How many of your wi- wives, you should represent your husband? Yeah, but my husband's stupid. <laughs> if my husband was spiritual like you, uh, I'd, I could submit to him. But my husband, you know, he's not spiritual. So I have to help him out. I have to show him how to do things. He said, you went here last week. I know. We obviously didn't hear it. 
I'm more spiritual than my husband. You should see my Bible. Oh, my goodness. Marked up. This is just one of many. They're all like this. I read mine. Go look at his Bible. It looks brand new. Some pages are even stuck together still. New Testament, not old. Oh, new. Wow. You don't read it as much? No, not even close. What about, what about praying? <laughs> What's that? I pray for both of us. I tell, I tell God all the time what he should be doing. He just don't figure it out. I keep trying to get God <clears throat> to make me the boss. I think he has because I'm pretty much the boss. I'm going to tell you something. You can never have a Jezebel if you don't have an Ahab. And nobody wants to be Jezebel. You ever read that story? Did not end well with her. It's not... See, order is about God's placement, not man's placement. Ladies, you really don't want the job because there's a big responsibility in being the covering because the buck stops with me. I don't care what Brenda's doing if she's teaching my kids how to yell at cars and stuff. Well, ultimately, I have to answer to God for all those. It comes back on me. She has got to learn how to represent me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I almost sound like a woman. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome, Casey. Amen, Brother Mark. That's... To preach it. That's the word of God. <laughs> oh, all right. The Son of Man can do nothing of himself. What he sees, he does. Ladies, you got to see how your husband would do it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If, you're, if your husband's going in there, you catch it. He's yelling and screaming, and they're wetting themselves and just terrorized. You could talk to him privately and say, hey, honey, I don't think that's right. You know, the Bible says here that you don't terrorize your children. <laughs> Amen? You can talk to them, just don't try to lord over them. I want to tell you something. We don't need to lord over anybody. I'm not going to lord over you. I don't want that placement in your life. I'm not going to make you do the right thing. I'm going to tell you what the Word says. If you don't want to do the right thing, that's between you and God. But there will be consequences if you do. Not from me, from Him. You can fake me out. I can come knock on your door and you can grab your Bible and sit there and, Hey, Pastor, come on in. Yeah, just do a little Bible study. Yeah, I just got through praying three hours. I don't know what that soap opera's doing. I'm <laughs> I shut that thing off. My kids. Yeah, they probably are in school. I'm still, probably my husband came by for lunch. He loves that show. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hallelujah. We all have these images. You know what's so fun about being free is you don't really care anymore. Whom the sun sets free is free. We want to be free. I don't want to live in an image of every time you come by, you, got, you come by the office, you want to look in my office, you want to, I want to have six Bibles laid out there. Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, come on in. I don't want you to know that I'm watching tractor pulls on YouTube. <laughs> Hello? Because that's not, that well, wouldn't be spiritual. I mean, we all do it. We all got, not tractor pulls, but we all have images. <laughs> Dave going, ah, one of my favorite things, I know. That's why I scare you down the hallway. Hallelujah. Um, we, all, we don't want to live in an image. We just want to be free. We want to know that God loves us, and we're trying to stay full of his love so we can love everybody else. I came to this place a long time ago, well, if God don't love through me, it's it's a mess. And I can get I can tap into his love every day. It's new every morning. His mercy is new. And if you start running out of love, it means you're running out of carnal love because carnal love runs out. Go tap into God's love. It's an endless supply. Fill up on God every day. Hallelujah. All right. Roman numeral three. Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And in um, Isaiah 14... Let's read there. Isaiah 14. Well, that's a scripture about Satan. Yeah. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, 
O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground. You are weakened, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, listen to what he says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the, the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend into the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet soon, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to hell, the lowest sides of the pits. One, one translation says, the slime on the wall. Satan's not got a throne in, in hell sitting down there ruling and reigning. He's on the earth, people. All the, all the monster shows I've seen shows him in hell. <laughs> he ain't there yet. Oh, he's heading that way. He's just not there yet, people. And when, that, when God does the ultimate judge him and puts him in outer darkness, he goes on to say, people will gaze upon him and say, you weaken nations? You, do, you had turned the earth into a wilderness? Now look at the world right now. Is the world a mess? Oh, my goodness. A man in England the other day lost his job, a school teacher, because he told these two girls, he said, good job, girls. But one of them thinks he's a guy, so he got fired for calling a, a girl a girl. So he's going, that is so crazy. <laughs> How did we get there? Just overnight. Does it, is anybody other than me, Mike, are, we, are you not a little bit of freaked out about what's coming? Because it's getting weird, people. Hallelujah. You weaken the nations. And he's done it, folks. More people are at the movies than at church. We have 300,000 churches in America. We got more theaters than that. Hallelujah. When, see, Satan's going to be looked at in hell as not as his all-powerful fallen angel. He's going to be looked at this little slime on the side of the wall. You know why? Because he didn't represent. He thought he would just exalt himself, that he would not. It wasn't good enough to be the, the angel that covered. That was his job. He hovered over the throne of God and sang to God. That's a pretty cool thing, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's good at music. I mean, you know, he has influence in the music industry, big time. That's because he's good at it. He would hover over the throne of God and Sing to God. That's a pretty high placement, I thought. But it wasn't high enough. He said, I want to be like the Most High. I want to tell you something. Emulation is a bad thing. I don't want you ever wanting to be like me or like Brenda or like Sean or Beth or, you know, or anybody else. I want you to like you and be thankful that God made you the way he did. I wish my hair, people that have straight hair, wish my hair was curly. People that have curly hair, wish my hair was straight. I am just wish I had some. <laughs> it's fading away up here, so I'm trying to pull it out here wherever, wherever I can get it. Hallelujah. Once a long hair, always a long hair. Hallelujah. Thing is, we, be thankful for who you are. Don't be like Kevin. Be Jared. I think you pretty much got that dialed in. <laughs> be, be who you are. And that's a good thing. Lucifer was not content to be where he was, where he, where he was placed. See, or, it's not about a, outranking somebody. It's about order. It's, that's God's placement. I wish I was the pastor. You know, if God placed you here, it would be awesome. But if he, didn't, if he don't place you here and you got here by some other means, it would not go well. See, Lucifer tried to, he tried to get God to drag in another throne. Hey, drag another throne in here. Let's turn this trinity into a quartet. That's literally people, that's what he tried to do. And he convinced two-thirds of the angels. So he has influence, folks. Or a third, excuse me, a third of the angels. This happened in heaven. He shows up one day and all these guys got these little straw hats that says, vote for Lucifer. Little signs. Lucifer, Lucifer. And God's going, okay, what's going on here? Uh, been singing to you for eons. I feel like I'm, you know, I glow. I've been, I glow as, almost as bright as you guys. 
See, he began to believe that the glory came from him, not reflected. See, anytime the glory is on you, that's a reflection of something else. When you're anointed and God's doing something cool through your life, that's God working through you. Amen? Man, when, I'm, when the anointing's on me and it's powerful, I go, woohoo! The next week when I feel like I'm drooling on myself and my shirt, I leave church my shirt wet and feel like people are going, I didn't get it. That was me. See, we always think the guy the week before, that's Brother Mike. No, that's God working through Brother Mike. When someone's prophesying to you, that's God speaking through them. That person no, can't no more talk from God than you can. When God's healing somebody through somebody else, that person's not a healer. They're just a vessel that God works through. You let the, you let the anointing come off that, and they, can, they, couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't heal a pimple. Hallelujah. Um, he says, I will be like the Most High. Lucifer forgot that he was only a reflection of the one he was sent to represent. We're all moons. When the moon's bright, it don't have no light. That's a reflection of the sun. Instead of reflecting the glory, he thought it came from him. That is a mistake lots of people make. Listen, go back to our original plan. You start off here, people, you and God. Got to get this relationship working good, solid. Then you got to get it so good that you can teach your wife and children the things of God and represent your Heavenly Father. And if you do that really well, then God will one day say, hey, I want you teaching my kids. I want you to be involved in ministry. I'm, I'm opening up my, my house to you. See, we think, now I'm going I'm to get out of high school. Jared, you could go, I'm going to skip college. I'm going to go to Bible school. I'm going to get out. They're going to give me a church, and I'm going to show the world the anointing. Now, just because you go to Bible school for four years don't make you come out glowing in the dark. You could have a lot of problems. And there are people that... Do you know right now, two-thirds of the guys that go to Bible school don't become pastors? Only a third. Two-thirds don't stick with it. Only a third. Does that not sound like we're, we're missing out on... We're losing the race on producing more ministers? We are. We don't need more preachers. We need more sons. See, I hope when Satan looks his bony head in this house, and he, he put more power to you if you try. When he looks in here, he doesn't see a minister. He sees a house full of, like what he saw on the day of Pentecost. When Satan heard all that noise and all that 120 people shouting and praising God, he looked up there and said, what's going on? Oh, my goodness. There's 120 Jesuses in there. He just saw Christ reproduce himself in 120 people. He thought he shut it down. Thought they only had 12 men to contend with. There's 120 up there, and they all got filled with the Spirit of God, and they came out, boom, sons of thunder. See, I want Jesus, to, I want the devil when he looks in here to see men and women mighty in spirit, everyone able, he's made us all able ministers of the New Testament. We don't need more preachers. We need more sons that represent Jesus in the marketplace, at the bank, at the PTA meeting, at school, on the soccer field. We need dads that aren't, what's wrong with you, coach? <laughs> Representing Jesus, not yelling at the coach. So we've got to represent Jesus when we leave here. That's when, it, that's when it counts. Sitting in here doesn't mean anything. We can cut the lights off. We all see who glows the brightest. Whoopee! It only matters when you go out there where it's really dark. That's when it counts. Lucifer thought he deserved to be in the Trinity. You know what it cost him? Everything. When you don't get the revelation of authority and you try to and you misrepresent or you try to take it some other way like he did, you, you'll get the same result. You'll lose out. I will tell you something. There are, there are people who have fought for headship in marriages and end up losing everything. That went over real well. Hallelujah. Can't you just use spiritual stuff? Don't get pragmatic. Don't get where we live. Well, that's where we live. Amen? She don't want my job. I don't want hers. I've been a Mr. Mom. There was a time in my life I was a Mr. Mom for two or three years. No, thank you. 
I'll be a dad. Well, it takes a village. No, it takes a mom and a dad. And if you're a single mom in this church, we've we got men around here that can help be, be a daddy to your kids until you, until you get you a husband. I don't know if I want a husband anymore. Well, once you get the bitterness and unforgiveness out of your life, you'll probably want one. Because he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. There aren't any good ones. Well, then you take that up with God. God says there are. Well, not, what, not on ChristianDating.com. Well, I didn't say that's not the only barrel he fishes from. Amen? Well, I haven't met any. There's slim pickings in the house. Well, that, 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 that. God brought this man a wife all the way across from the United States. He lived in California. She lived in Mississippi, and God brought them together. Don't limit God. Amen? All right. In closing... In John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, that's, that's, that's representation full-blown right there. Philip says, it's, Lord, just show us the Father, and it, it suffices. Just show us what he looks like, how he acts. And Jesus said, How long have we been with you guys? Doesn't that, doesn't that grieve God? Yeah. I know what Jesus I like that scripture. To me, when he says, How long? I find myself sometimes as a pastor going, How long? How many years have you been here? How many? Ten? How long? How long till you're going to get what the, the simplicity of you got to die so he can live? Jesus died in the garden to his will, and you and I got life eternal because of it. See, if I die, my wife lives, and my children live. But if I don't die, and it's all about me, then they're, they're going to suffer. Hallelujah. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you you got at some point in your Christian walk, you've got to be able to say, I believe Jesus would do just what I just did. And be okay with that. And believe that he would do what you just did because you're representing the Father. Oh, I can never represent Jesus. Well, he would never tell us to do things if we couldn't do it. You know, God's not a tease. God don't say, you can do it. God. <laughs> Oh, they're trying. <laughs> You're gonna fall on your face. You can't do nothing. Not not unless you help us. But see, God says, I'll be happy to help you if you're gonna represent it and do it my way. Not a religious way. Not a way where you're quoting scripture and you're cutting people. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two edged sword. It says that, but that means it's 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 not it means we're supposed to be killing people with it. The letter killeth. The Spirit gives life. If whatever you're telling people, if it's not giving them life, it's not Christ. Because Christ can bring conviction with, with still life on it. He brings conviction where you go, man, I'm convicted. I want to do that because that sounds like the plan. Amen? Not, oh, I feel like homemade sin on a popsicle stick. I just feel so bad. That was good service. I went to a church one time where... If you went left feeling bad, it was a good service. Man, I just feel like God can't hardly stomach me. Praise God. You know, that never motivates us to feel. If our earthly parents shamed us and criticized and put us down, that would never inspire them to do anything great. And a lot of people grew up like that. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It starts in your personal life with God. It trans. It, it has to work in your domestic setting, and then it will work in the church. We keep trying to get people to do the latter without doing the first two, and it don't work. How can we tell, teach the world about a Jesus we don't even know and we can't represent? That's how we get embarrassed out there. Hallelujah. Wasn't this good? It, it, it's the truth, people, and the truth is, sets us free. I feel offended. Well, truth is offensive. It is. Jesus, I mean, he was not politically correct. He hurt people's feelings along the way. But you know what? Those that hurt him and turned around, they, they went on to live happily ever after. Hallelujah. Well, you can substitute it for your own. You can represent his authority. And I'll tell you something, God won't give you spiritual authority until you learn how to handle some natural authority.
If you can't submit to your boss at work and every time he tells you to do something and he tells you to do it a certain way, do it the way he says. But I have a better idea. Run it by him before you start doing it. And if he says, no, I don't want you to do it that way. You're going to do construction tomorrow. You're going to start out doing some things, and you may have some better ideas. That seems lame. This message is in season. Just do it the way he said do it. Keep measuring those things and bringing that wood. We could skip some of these steps. Don't skip them. See, that that was a true story I told you guys at the beginning. It's sad, but it was. It wastes a lot of waste of good wood because they were cut. They have to do it all over again. We waste a lot. <laughs> Matt said, been there, done that. We all have. We've all done that. I don't think that the, we could skip those steps. Remember when your dad used to say, son, you're going to mow the yard? When you was a little kid, you couldn't wait to power. <laughs> One day I'll get to mow that, take that machine that eats up grass and spits it out. That's awesome. And then remember when your dad used to say, okay, now before you mow, I want you to walk around the yard and look for what? Sticks, bricks. In my, in my yard, it was bricks, rocks, skates, sto- objects. Why? Because you can't see them in the grass. How many of us ever thought, that's a wasted step? Oh! Why is there oil coming out the muffler? Because you broke the rod. Dad comes home. I don't know what happened, Dad. I started mowing, and it just quit. (laughs) It just quit? Yeah, it just stopped. Our dads are smarter than that, aren't they? Why is there oil coming out the... Dad pulls it. (laughs) There's no compression, son. Really? (laughs) See, this this is a prime example. You go, yeah, but that's a kid. Kids don't know any... That's true. But, you know... 30 years later, and we're still using those excuses, something's wrong. I understand where I was a kid. I spoke and acted like a kid. But when I became a man, I put away, I started walking the field. I started looking for the minds. I started watching my children, who they're hanging out with. See, it, 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 it grows up into other things. Well, I don't want to get involved in my kid's life. Why not? I want to be the cool dad. My wife wants to be the Kool-Aid mom. We want all the kids in the neighborhood to like us. Well, you want to be your kid's friend or your kid's parents? I want to be their friend. They're going to have lots of friends in life. They're only going to have one set of parents. Choose parent. Amen? Yeah, but it's not the fun one. But But it's the glorious one. Amen? If you get to be their friend, that's a, that's a that's a plus. But you always be their dad first. I am friends with most of my kids. I mean, all of them, really. Yeah, it happens. But they still come to me with, for advice. And when they get a promotion or something cool happening, guess who they want to tell? They go tell their wife. Then they call me up. Hey, Dad, guess what? This is cool. And you know what I do? That's awesome, son. I'm proud of you. They like to hear that I'm proud of you. They just light up. Thought you would be. I'm proud too. That's what we live for, folks. Don't withhold that thinking they can't handle it. Does God withhold it from you and me? I know God says things about you by faith sometimes. You're the apple of my eye. (laughs) Does he not? Oh, he does. and You know he does. I know the thoughts I think toward you. Happy thoughts. Thoughts a place to give you hope, give you a future. Even though you're being a moron and doing stupid things, I'm still thinking good thoughts about you. I mean, God's not stupid. Hello. <laughs> Alpha, Omega, beginning. He's already seen it. He, he already knows the things we're going to do wrong. And he's still saying good things about us. What an awesome dad. Because he knows in the end result it's going to turn out. I'm so glad he don't withhold it. Hallelujah. All right. You encouraged? You encouraged in the balcony?